Welcome back. Today we're gonna do uh, a dandelion kind of exploding animation. I watched this many years ago at a Lane 8 uh, concert. I thought it was pretty cool. We're gonna take inspiration for that. So it's gonna be a macro shot of a really zoomed in dandelion and all of the seeds are gonna explode out. So to do this, we have to do a few things. We have to instance the points to make all the dandelion seeds, but also make the dandelion itself. So it's gonna be a mix of geometry nodes and actual like some quick modeling. So before we do any of that, we always wanna check reference first. So here's some reference. What we're gonna be looking at is kind of just making this kind of white dandelion fluff with the seed in the stem, as well as kind of this base, this kind of like curved circle with a little indent and these little like uh, fun little pockets where the seeds kind of nestle in. So we're gonna do a subdiv modeling. So just control two on the base default cube, no problem. And then we're gonna have uh, the modifier on. Even beforehand, probably should pull in an actual reference picture in, in Blender itself. Do we want, let's do the X, shift A, uh, image, Cool, so we have it and we're gonna rotate it to be a bit easier this way so we can see it as almost kind of up and down. So we have this, X-ray mode, uh, Alt-Z, and then we're gonna just kind of scale in the sides. So uh, scale S, and then we're gonna do leave Z the same, so it's Shift-Z, and we can pull them both in. Nice. So now we have kind of more of this seed shape, and then we're gonna look to the top, three to pull the face, we're gonna I to inset and maybe pull actually more. So I push S to scale that, pulled in more. I'm gonna zoom in to make it easier to see. And we're gonna pull this one up. So G to grab, Z on the axis. Maybe inset it one more time. And then we're going to extrude with E and pull it up. And I might add an extra. And we're gonna add a loop cut to make sure we have extra geometry. Control R for the loop cut, drag it down here and then we're gonna keep on pulling up. So E to extrude, no, my bad, three to pull off the face selection, grab here, G to grab, pull it up, pull it up. And then we need to scale all of this actually. So we're gonna grab this, and S to scale it down, grab, scale it down, make sure we stay on the axis so it stays nice and straight, scale it down. Grab, perfect. And then let's actually move the reference back. So grab and then X, pull on the X axis. Here we are. Period on the numpad to pull it in. And then we're going to keep on pulling this up. We have it selected, perfect. I'm just gonna grab Z. And we're gonna do another loop cut to pull the geometry up here. And at the very tip, I think we can just do a particle system to make all those little fluffy things. So Alt-Z to turn off X-ray mode. How is it looking? It's looking about right. And then let's do the little geometry node system to pull the fluff. So we're gonna do, I guess, just a plane. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna call this fluff. And the fluff is gonna go into the cube, which we're gonna say seed base. Now let's grab the fluff and this. M for new collection, and let's just say dandelion seed. So we stay a bit organized. The fluff is gonna go up here, go and grab Z, pull it up. Man, it, there we go. I was like, I didn't even see it because of the orientation. Cool. Add new modifier, geometry nodes, cool. New, click, go to geonodes. We really only need to have it just be a tiny little icosphere probably with the fluff. And then we can increase the radius. Oops, not the radius. We can decrease the radius and we can increase the subdivisions. And then we really only want the top part of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half by just pulling only the top parts of the faces. So we're gonna do a separate geometry. Separate geometry. Gonna pump this in. Let's do a join geometry so we can always make sure we know what we're seeing. And then it's gonna be here. And then the selection we want is going to be the positional data of the X, Y, Z. So we're going to grab that and we'll do capture attribute. And it's going to be this. And I guess on the faces is all we really care about. So we can say face and we can do separate X, Y, Z. Now we have the position and then we can view it. And with the Z, perfect. And it's the top half. So we can do greater than, let's just do 0.01. That's fine. We get a nice little cap. That'll work nicely. So on this, we then we're gonna do um, 
points. Mesh to points. Mesh to points right here. Pull this in. Mesh is going to go there. You want it just on the faces. And then that will have all of those points just on top of that little cap. We don't need this anymore. We have this just the cap. And then on this, we can then do curve line. Instance on points. And then we're going to do a curve line. And we instance all of those guys. And then they're going to be just rotating out a little bit from the normal of that face, which we have right here. So we can do a capture attribute as well, right here. And then we're going to say normal. Grab it there. And then we're going to pull this and it's be a, a line rotation to vector. We pull this normal here along the Z and it pops out. There we are. Now we have a little cap, a little fluffy cap. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, mesh to curve. And we're going to just make this. Oh, it's curved to mesh, my bad. Every time. And then we're going to do a curved circle. Make it three. Pop this in, 0 0.01. Looks okay. And then we can also clean it up a little bit with a curve radius. And we're going to pull this in with a float curve. And then spline parameter. And we take the factor. And then that will be a good way for us to get that effect of getting smaller. Oops. Boom. Nice. So we got some fluff. We have the curves. That's on. And then we got to position that in the space we want. We can go grab, go here, and then maybe even make this radius a bit smaller. 0.05. Nice. And it's looking like we have it lined up, which is good. Because that way, the seed is good to go. Okay, so we have the seed basically done. We'll need to texture it later, but we essentially have it looking okay. I would say maybe the, the curves need to be a bit longer for us to have more of the fluffiness. So let's just increase that length. There we go. I think that looks good enough. Seed is done. We can grab this and move it off to the side. We can keep the reference, move it off to the side too. Now we gotta do the base. So we're gonna do the base with just a subdivided mesh cube. Control two, get the cube, grab it. X to dissolve vertices, have it looking good. And then we gotta make the center part, which is gonna be three. I to inset, E to extrude down. I think this actually needs to be pulled in. So, oops, three, grab that face. Three, grab the face, S to scale it in. Get this ring, two to grab uh, edges. Alt click to grab just the top two to grab the edges. Alt click to grab the top. I think S to scale in a little bit. Three again, pull this middle face. S to scale that really in. Nice, it's looking okay. And so then maybe this ring right here we need to fix. So two to grab just the edges. S to scale it out. It's looking okay. Edges, S to scale a little bit in. Nice. Looks good enough. Now we can work on the seed system. So we have this right here, and then we're going to make these little divots. So we see in here, we have these little divots where the seeds are gonna go. We gotta do that through extrusions inside the geometry node system. So we have the mesh for what we're working with, the base mesh for the geometry node system, and then we're going to do that with the extrusions like I was talking about. So we're gonna do extrude mesh. We get all of it, nice, very cool but we really want to only work with part of it. So let's first make this half, this, this, the scale, just so it's easier to see, and do Alt-Z to see it a bit better. We only want to select probably from, I would say above here, and then we don't want the very, very center part. So we got to uh, change the selection with that. We can do that with same kind of idea with the positional data. So we can do gradient texture, and this is how we're going to get essentially kind of like uh, the center part. We first need to get the positional data. So capture attribute, faces, and it's gonna be the position. That pumping in, 
This goes here. And now we have the color data. Nice, okay, so just to recap, because I just was troubleshooting a little bit, the gradient texture, and then we're pulling it in with the greater than, and it's basically really close to zero. So we're not getting the very center stuff, and we're not getting the very last kind of little, little slice. So then if you look at the extrusion, we're gonna see just everything else is going to extrude out, which is good. So we have the bottom ring, which is, which is not being done, and the center part, which is also not being done. So then from here, what we can do is, like this is basically our selection of what we care about. So we probably should group this to make it easier to see. So we're gonna grab this and we're just gonna call this Control J and we're just gonna say like face selection, face selection. And then what we wanna do from here is we wanna also instance points. So we can do mesh to points and we have this mesh and we have this selection of points and it's on the faces and we do a join geometry and we should be able to see we only want the points there. So if we turn off this uh, extrude, we'll see the points right there. Good. Now what we wanna do is we wanna extrude uh, not at all and just take that top face of the extrusion, which we can see kind of like right here. Uh, that way we can extrude again internally down. So we're gonna take this mesh and then the selection is just this part, this top faces, so we're extruding again, and we're gonna offset a little bit negative 0.2. And if we turn off the viewer, you'll see it's going in. What this is doing is basically making sure we have a little bit of an inset. So before we do this, actually we need to scale. So scale elements, we wanna scale elements, and it's just the same thing, just these faces. And we wanna scale them uh, by like 0.5, maybe a little bit less. Be like 0.2, oops, like 20% in. So now we're kind of getting this little like uh, inserted border. And now if we do a, a subdivision surface at the very end of this, we're gonna get kind of this little like pockety uh, rounded edges. So maybe even 0.9. And then let me just pull it back a little bit. And now we have all of these little points kind of nestled inside a little like tiny uh, spot for the seed to fit in. Cool. So then we have kind of the base view. This top part is going to be how we see the uh, like seed pockets. So I'll just call this control J. I'll say seed pockets. And then now we can put inside the actual seeds themselves. Before we're able to pull in this kind of seed base, what we need to do is make sure we we apply the geometry net system so we're able to, to uh, apply all of real geometry. So an easy way of making sure we kind of keep track of this is we can take inside here, we can just duplicate this, Shift D, grab both, Shift D, has both of them in there. And so we can call this um, like backup. And this one, we're gonna to wanna to apply this system. So we're gonna go, so here at the end of this, in order for this to work, we have to do realize instances, and then we can say apply. And now it's applied, it's a real thing. The seed base, the seed base also needs to be applied. Apply. Nice. And then we go into the instances. We have the seed base, pull it in, instance. So now these are all being instanced with all the little fluff, which is good. And then we gotta rotate it along the normal to make sure we get it uh, like in all these little pockets appropriately. So we have that normal data back here. So we do another capture attribute and we do normal. And we do align rotation to vector. Pull this in, pull this in here. And now it should be all popping out. And this kind of looks like a little dandelion. So we're kind of like halfway done, maybe even more than halfway done, which is nice. I would say the one thing we want to do right here is we want to move this out and also pull the, the origin up. So we grab all this, tab in, A to grab everything, uh, make sure the right axis, G, Z, pull it up right about there. And that will instance everything else and shift it a little bit. Great. So now we have this dandelion fluff looking pretty good. Uh, and then what we gotta do is make the motion of it, of it exploding out. So we have it here. 
we have these instances. So that what that's going to be is just translating the instances through, through some noise textures. So translate instance. And then the main trick for this to make it an easy animation is to nest it inside a repeat zone. So we're gonna do a repeat zone. If I can type correctly, repeat zone, fantastic. And then we put the instances, no, just kidding. This is gonna go inside here. This is going in here. This is going in here. This is being cut. And then what we care about is making sure that we're having the noise. We say noise texture. And then we can say vector math. We're adding that in. This is gonna be the translation. We're gonna subtract by 0.5. That way we offset from the, just the general uh, normalized noise from what we're seeing. And then if we just were to increase iterations, we should see this slowly fluffing away. Uh, but we're not seeing it move fast enough, so we gotta scale it. So if we do shift D to duplicate it, we're gonna go to scale, make this like five, and it should be moving much faster. So we're already getting all of these guys floating and flying away. Look how quick that was. Uh, but it's not moving fast enough. So I want to offset with some more noise and maybe even change the scale of the actual noise itself. And this actually shouldn't be local space. It should actually be the world space. This might actually not be fast enough for it to go away, I think. Are we getting double? We are getting double. This isn't needed, goodbye. There we are. So now if we do this, we're getting it to move away. Cool. And then it has the center point, which we care about. So here's the noise I liked. So what I did is I put it in the noise texture. I increased the scale to make it fairly large. I shifted the, um, the offset by the minus 0.5, as you'd expect. Added a little wind vector. So it's moving uh, on the Y and Z axis. So it's gonna go up and away kind of in this direction. Uh, and then I also increased the scale of this. After that, I then added in the normal vector to kind of explode it out. I did it by 0.6, so it's reduced. And then I also scaled all of this noise at the very end. And so I'm kind of happy with how this looks. So if you look at this together, just to see, to see how it kind of moves with the iterations, it kind of explodes out like someone's kind of blowing on it. And, they, and then, it, then it kind of comes back. So obviously you can kind of spend a lot of time messing with this and kind of tweaking kind of how the dandelion seeds kind of flutter and fly around. That's kind of the main kind of like secret of it. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you get something new. Uh, appreciate it. See you next time. Augury.